in a different order. Here's another Prezi. This one is one that I use with my science method students. I and I use it with them throughout the whole course. Um, K-12, K-12 teachers might want to use it with their students one Prezi through a whole unit. I remind my students what the essential question is for the course. And then I would say, remember how we, in the first month, we worked on inquiry and remind them of a lot of the pieces of information that they saw down here. But I wouldn't go into that at that point. Just reminding them. We're taking the grand tour of the course. Then I would remind them of another focus question in the course, science understandings, and all of the pieces that were involved in the course. Now, heads up. See this piece right here, Atlas? You're going to see a video on that later, on how I would have given instruction on that piece. Remind them of another piece of the course that we've already covered. And then what I like about the Prezi is then as we're go, I've reminded them of everything going on in the course of the unit thus far. And now in this section, we start diving in with the Zoom feature of Prezi into specific content where I would be overviewing for them how we're about to go into approximate fit and some of the details of that and then going into status change and some of the details of that. If you are trying to teach conceptually, like so many teachers are now, Prezi can be a great way to help bring the students back again and again to the big picture. YouTube, third, um, third technology that I use all the time. YouTube is like a Swiss Army knife for me also because it lets me get all kinds of video instruction out to my students. There's my video panel and you may be noticing that a whole lot of these are talking head videos and they are. So I use announcement videos often with my students. Good morning. Happy Monday. Hope you had a good weekend. I did. A good Father's Day. My sons came over and my older son is a newlywed. Uh, sat back there at that yellow table. They um, cooked dinner for me and we just had a good time. Um, quick thoughts on today. Tomorrow I'm going to give you a bigger, we're going to step back, connect with the whole big picture of the course as we start our next learning topic. Today, just to make sure you know where we are, we are wrapping up our first learning topic, learning styles of multiple intelligences. Okay, some of you are, if you teach full time in, in a face to face classroom, you may be thinking, why would I release an announcement video? You wouldn't. You'd be making those announcements live. But when I teach blended and online classes, these little two, three minute talking head videos work well for me to be able to communicate information to my students quickly and keep them on track. Um, I never edit these videos. If I make a mistake in them, I just start over because remember, they are quick. Another way I use YouTube, though, is not a talking head video. Sometimes I it, it, this one is going to be me, but it's not the quick one. This is for, for announcements. This is about information that I want them to learn. So what's the difference between inquiry and problem-based learning? It's a question that I've had teachers ask me often when I introduce the approach. And honestly, it's a good question because their the approaches are similar. But there is one key difference. And I So this video would be used with science teachers in a professional development workshop or in my with my science methods students. I'm here at Jones Valley Teaching Farm in the heart of Birmingham, Alabama, because I think being at a farm especially an urban farm, will give us some insight on the differences between the two. So often when I'm planning an, an instructional video, I try to find a setting like the farm for this one that helps me communicate the ideas that I'm trying to communicate. And I think it's more effective than just the talking head video where I'm sitting in my office or on my front porch. So that's how I use YouTube videos. I use them in a whole lot of different ways, but they're almost always coming from my iPhone loaded up quickly to YouTube so that I don't have to manage another platform. 
next instructional tool technology that I, that I use at times is flipping the classroom. Now, flipping the classroom, you can find all kinds of stuff on the web about it. Many teachers out there use it a lot more than I do. Basically, the flip classroom is when rather than lecturing in class and then having students do individual practice on their own for homework, you flip the lecture out into the homework section, and then you use the class time for interactive things that couldn't happen during homework. The best examples of flipped, flipped classrooms that I can give you are Paul Anderson, his science videos. He's a teacher at Bozeman High School in Bozeman, Montana. He does high-quality videos that... Let's try that one more time. There we go. Here's a taste of it. Hi, it's Mr. Anderson. Edit this out. So the best so the best example of the flipped classroom that I can give you is Paul Anderson, a science teacher at Bozeman High School in Bozeman, Montana. Here's a taste of what he does. Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and welcome to Biology Essentials, Video 1. This is on natural selection, so I've included a picture here of Charles Darwin. Most people think that Charles Darwin is famous because he somehow invented evolution. Um, that's not totally accurate. Why Charles Darwin is famous is that he's the first scientist that really gave us a mechanism that explains how evolution, especially adaptation, can occur. And so if you're trying to learn biology, the best place to start is with Charles Darwin and a better understanding of natural selection. Before we can talk about natural selection, however, we should define what evolution is. And so in this class, in evolution, evolution is simply going to be chain. Okay, so one thing that I really like about what Paul Anderson does is he uses this little corner where you can see his face, but most of the screen is where he's going over the content. Highly effective, well done, and if you hadn't realized about flipping the classroom, you don't have to produce all the instructional videos on your own, which can be a lot of work. You can actually, if you're a science teacher, you can actually tap into Paul Anderson's large collection of biology videos or find other teachers who are flip, flipping the classroom. And if you want to know more, Paul Anderson has actually flipped out a video on how to basically flip the classroom. And he even talks about the kind of programs that he uses. So there's the flip classroom. Um, an example for my own practice is this one where my students, I needed to, remember I told you before about the Prezi when I was talking about my science method students and Atlas? Well, hey there. This video gives an overview of Atlas for science literacy, a little bit on where it came from and mostly how it can be useful for science teachers. So a little background. In America, we all know how to teach facts. Science teachers know how to do that, and they know how to assess that. But how do you teach? Okay, so I had flipped my own video. Rather than trying to give this presentation about Atlas live to my students, I had them look at the video of Atlas and do some work before we came to class. So in class, we could discuss Atlas and what a good tool it is. Okay, two more quickly. I'm going to close out some tabs here so I can get to them easily. BYOD. Are you familiar with BYOD? The bring your own ad ad device approach for school